Automating in FL Studio is not as hassle-free as it should be, especially when it comes to third-party plugins. In this video, you're going to learn everything that you need to know about automations in FL Studio, and towards the end, I'm going to share some tips and tricks to help you save some time, speed up your workflow, and also prevent headaches. Let's go! First, let's get the basics out the way. When it comes to FL Studio stock, whether it's knobs, or sliders, mixer effects, or instruments, the process of creating automation clip is as simple as right-clicking on any parameter and create automation clip. So there are really no problems or confusion there. Any of the parameters that are FL Studio stuck, you can right-click on and create automation clip, simple as that. However, when it comes to third-party plugins, it's a little bit more difficult. In order to automate any third-party plugin parameter, you need to turn on this icon up here, left click or move that parameter. In this case, we want to do it on the mix knob of the capitator. Go back to that icon up there, right click, and then create automation clip. As you can see, we now have the capitator on the snare channel, mix knob being automated. And it works the exact same way if you want to do it on an instrument. So let's say I want to automate this high EQ band on this synthesizer. I turn on the icon up there again, click and move that parameter, right click, on that icon again and create automation clip. Now I have Anno 2 EQ filter 4 gain. Now that we know how to create automation for both stock plugins and third party plugins, we can now get into the more advanced stuff so I can show you what creative things you can do using the automation clips. This simple beat currently doesn't have any automations on it. It probably did have a few here and there, but I consolidated the audio so I could delete the plugins. We're gonna work on this hi-hat loop and try to create some movement using automations in it so I can show you what you can do. I'm gonna highlight the section where the hi-hat is, press on the top left corner of the sample, go to automate and create one for panning. First problem that you may run into is when you create dots and then as you can see, just moved a little bit lower than the default position or you move another one higher. And I'm just doing this so you know how you can do it fast. The default position is always on the first dot. Right click on that, copy value, and you can now right click on any of the dots and paste it. So now we know everything is back to normal where it was. That's how to fix a simple problem. Now, if you double click on the automation itself, you will get this advanced window where you can do a lot more with your automations. Let's start with the LFO. You will get access to the five knobs down here that will allow you to create different shapes for your automation. Speed, self-explanatory, and you can see the visuals on the side. With tension, you can go from square to triangle and to really spiky shapes. Skew, I don't even know how to explain that, but you can see what it does, it's called skew, and I don't know what that word means, honestly. Width is self-explanatory, and in the case of panning, if you put it on the full amount, you will go from hard left to hard right, and if you put it less, you go from 70% to 70%, depending on how much amount you set. So it's kind of doing the job of automatic panel right now. It shifts them left to right based on the shape that we created using the LFO. If you press on this arrow, you will get a few more options. Some of them you may be familiar with from the piano roll. Flip vertically and analyze audio file we're gonna come back to at the end of the video. Scale level is a handy one that allows you to change the value or the volume of the whole thing depending on what the automation is and create some offset. The one that I use often is create sequence. With this one, similar to channel rack, you can create dots to add more to the sequence and you can control different parameters down here to create changes to the shape of your automation. You have control over attack level, decay slope, sustain level, and release slope. So basically your ADSR. And you have those on the side as well as knobs. Or you can mess with the time mule to change the timing of the automation, you can see what it does visually. You also have the option to randomize or humanize each category. Let's say I really like what I've done with this automation. Now I want to use the same pattern, same automation for another sound or another parameter. If you press on this plus icon next to target links, you get this pop-up window that says tweak the parameters you want to link to that automation. When you are done, click the plus button again. You say okay to that. Now for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put the same automation 
on the panning of my main melody. So I'm going to touch the panning of my main melody, come back and press on the plus icon again. Now you can see it says bells and chops panning added to this list. So now if I play the beat, you will hear that this melody is also reacting to this automation. And you can see it visually happening to the panning knob on mixer channel 12. And you can keep adding more to this list if you want to. If you want to delete one, choose it in the list and press on the cross icon, say yes, and it's gone. Before we move on from this subject, I want to show you another thing that you can do without opening the automation itself. So if you create a dot here and you have one at the start, if you right click on one and you change the mode, let's say to pulse and you drag it down, you can see that it changes the shape between the first and the second dot to pulse and you have control over the tension and the speed of the whole thing using that middle dot. So that's a fast way of doing things, of chopping things because this is a volume automation on the hats. This will now act like a gate. As if almost you use Negro speed pattern. So that's possible if you want to go the fast route. Now let's move on to a problem that used to give me headaches and I finally found a way to fix it a while ago. A lot of you may be familiar with this plugin, it's the contact sampler and within this you can use different libraries but the problem within FL Studio is that you cannot right click on the mod wheel and create automation clip and you can't even right click on the mod wheel within the library and create automation clip. You might say that's obvious, it's a third party plugin, why would you be able to do that? But even if you go up here and try to do the third party method, turn that on, move the mod wheel you still aren't able to create automation clip for that. The fix I'm going to show you for this has multiple other benefits that I will try to demonstrate along the way. First, within contact, go up here, press on the wrench icon, go to the second tab and set your input port to one. In your channel rack, press the plus button, create a MIDI out. This is a stock FL Studio plugin that everybody should have. In here, you want to set the port number to whatever you set your contact. We set it to one, so port number one. Now if you press on this wrench icon beside any knob, you get this page and here you can name it. So let's say mod wheel, short name mod, and it asks you for the CC number. You have other options as well, but what you're going to mainly need is the CC number. In case you get confused about the CC numbers, all you have to do is to Google it and say I add modulation wheel to the end of that. It tells me that MIDI CC number one is modulation wheel. So if we set this to number one, the range is from zero to 127, minimum to maximum. You press accept. Now this is your modulation wheel. I'm just gonna put one note in the piano roll. If I play that and control this knob, this knob you can right click and create automation clip for, or you can click on link to controller, move, any knob or slider on your MIDI keyboard and it will be linked to that so you can control it via that in case your keyboard doesn't have a modulation wheel. My Akai MPK Mini doesn't have a modulation wheel, it has a joystick instead and my 88 key MIDI keyboard also doesn't have a modulation wheel. So I have this problem often. That's why I have this particular thing set up in my template. So all I do is just route any plugin I want to this MIDI out plugin. But if you remember, I said this has multiple other benefits. A lot of you may not have a sustain pedal. If you don't know what a sustain pedal is, basically it's when I press a note on my keyboard and when I take my hand off of it, it stops. But when you have a sustain pedal, you press the note down and you leave your hand and the notes keep going until you leave the pedal. It's great for adding some humanization into your piano melodies or when you're playing live for strings, you want to hold out chords and you want to switch hands and switch fingers, it has a lot of cases where you can use a sustain pedal. If you don't have that, here's the only way that you can replicate that in FL Studio and automate it. Sustain pedal also has a CC number. It's uh, 64 if I remember correctly. Yeah, MIDI CC 64. We create another one, we call it sus pedal. We set the number for CC to 64. 0 to 127 again. Whenever this knob is on 0, you have no sustain pedal and when it's on 127, the sustain pedal is engaged. Now again, you can automate this or link it to a controller. If you have a short slider, that would be great. You can just put it up fast and down fast and you get sustain pedal or not. You could also do expression. Expression is CC11. It's mainly about volume. 
compared to dynamics. Modulation will usually is routed to orchestra plugins dynamics. Expression kind of reacts like volume. If you want to hear it, have a listen. So on zero, you hear nothing. It's just another way of adding realism. You also have CCs for vibrato, for breath control, for multiple, multiple other things. So get familiar with this plugin. It has great uses. The problem with contact is now solved. If I remember correctly, the same problem applies to Omnisphere and a couple other plugins that don't allow you to automate the modulation wheel. Now let's talk about something that you can do with automation to replicate side chaining your reverb or delay or any other effect to your vocals. I'm gonna use this sample to demonstrate. I just send my sample to a mixer channel and then send that to a reverb. Now I'm gonna right click on the fader of my reverb and create automation clip. From here, you double click to open the automation. You press on this little arrow. And if you remember, I said we're gonna come back to analyze audio file. Press on that. Here you want to choose your vocal. If it's your own vocal, find it and select it. If it's a sample, find that and select that. For me, it's this one. Double click on it, it's gonna analyze it. When it's done analyzing, you can see that it replicates what was happening with the vocal. So at the start, there was a silence. Now there's a silence there. And as soon as the vocal comes in, you can see that happening. So it replicates the audio file you give it to analyze. From here, you want to click on that arrow again and flip it vertically. So we want the exact opposite. When there are gaps and empty spaces in the vocal, we want our reverb volume to be high and when the vocal is singing, we want it to be low. You probably need some adjustments from here to get the exact thing that you want. Open scale levels to make sure that your reverb is not too loud. And now let's listen to what we've got. I'm gonna exaggerate it so you can hear what happens in the gaps. In some scenarios, this works great, and in some scenarios, it just doesn't. So it's a tool that you have available. It's great to know how to use it, but when you use it and when not, that's up to you. The final tip of this video that greatly improved my workflow, and I'm sure it's gonna do the same for you, is this, and it's super simple. If you hold A on your typing keyboard and right-click on any of these parameters, it creates an automation clip for it. I just right-click on the panning knob of channel 7, and that's what we got. I'm going to hold A again and right click on the fader of my ping pong delay. It's going to create one for that. And it works the same in channel rack and even in stock plugins. For third party plugins, you still have to go to that icon up there, turn it on, touch and move the parameter that you want to do that with. Now, if you hold A and right click on that icon, you still get an automation clip for that parameter that you wanted. If you record using FL Studio, make sure to check out the video I link above to get yourself a free recording template and save even more time. As ever, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.